There's no shortage of anime made specifically for the purpose of selling a product to children. You got your Transformers, your Pokemon, your Beyblades, but the greatest offender of the media to product pipeline is the card game anime. With that, there's no better place to start than with the show that's captivated American children for nearly two decades, Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh!, like many other anime, got its claim to fame in America on the infamous 4Kids TV. If you're an anime fan, you probably equate 4Kids with horrendous dubs or extensive censorship on anything remotely adult-themed. I'm talking like in the original Dragon Ball Z localization, when they removed the halos and blood because, you know, death and violence bad. Despite its less than favorable record, if you were a kid in the 2000s, you probably have fond memories of 4Kids being your introduction to anime as a whole. To this day, I still watch and play Yu-Gi-Oh! in one form or another. But what did 4Kids do for Yu-Gi-Oh? More importantly, what did Yu-Gi-Oh! do for card game anime? Yu-Gi-Oh!'s English dub started in late September of 2001. The 224 episode series ran all the way until 2006. During its time, Yu-Gi-Oh! was one of 4Kids' flagship series. The original Duel Monsters alone has spawned multiple spin-offs, movies, video games, and obviously thousands upon thousands of cards. In the years that followed, every anime style card game you could think of produced their own shows, all trying to capitalize on the success of Yu-Gi-Oh! Not only does the series still continue to this day with its newest edition, Vrains, but it also spawns shows like Card Fight Vanguard, Bakugan, a TCG spinoff of Digimon, and Beyblade. Does anyone remember Duel Masters? Uh, yeah, I didn't think so. Dad, I can't believe you came. Actually, I'm still a disembodied spirit. 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 So you're not really here. Nope. 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 Dang. Nope. Point is, the four kids dub of Yu-Gi-Oh opened up the American market to card game anime as a whole. Obviously, I'm a big fan of all things Yu-Gi-Oh. I can make an entire video series on why Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is the greatest show to ever grace this earth. But, that's nothing more than my own opinion. From an objective standpoint, Yu-Gi-Oh! and other card game anime that followed aren't especially well written. Neos! He like, totally saved the universe, man! No, Jin. You, like, totally saved the universe. On behalf of the inhabitants of Neospace, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not only that, but they do a poor job at conveying the enjoyment from actually playing these games in real life. There's a great Mother's Basement video about the problems with card game anime. He specifically mentions that they do a poor job at conveying what makes these games fun. There is one card game anime that sets itself apart from the clutter of poorly written, poorly dubbed children's show cash grabs. The underrated gem that is Selector Infected We Cross. What is Selector Infected We Cross? Well, We Cross is a Japanese trading card game that released alongside its very own anime to promote it. The Selector series, that is Selector Infected We Cross and Selector Spread We Cross, is an anime production of JC Staff in collaboration with Takara Tami and Warner Entertainment Japan. It has Steinsgate director Takuya Sato and Anohana writer Mario Kata. The show follows Ruko. New in town and struggling to make friends, Ruko is gifted a Wii Cross deck by her brother. Upon inspecting the new deck, she is surprised to find that her L-Rig, a card type in Wii Cross that acts essentially as a player's avatar, is alive from within the card. It's not learned what this means until later because Ruko's L-Rig, which she names Tama, has lost her memories. Battle, battle, oh, you still want to play, huh? The next day, Ruko meets Yuzuki, who explains that they are both called Selectors. As Yuzuki explains, Selectors are chosen girls who have a chance of getting their deepest wish granted. The catch? If they lose three times, they lose their L-Rig and status as Selectors. On the journey to battle for their wishes, they meet the larger cast of Wii Cross players. Hitue, a shy girl whose wish is to have friends, Akira, a popular model with a crazy streak, and lastly, Iona, another model whom Akira lives in the shadow of. Wheatcross's appeal, like Madoka Magica and Evangelion before, 
comes from its subversion of expectations. It takes the classic structure of hero gets card and saves the earth, everyone happy, and turns it inside out, going for a more isolated dark story grounded in a very real world. Cross actually is a great marketing strategy for its first month. The anime's first four episodes air prior to the sale of the first decks. We're presented with a fairly tame card game anime, with at very least an interesting premise. Following the show's introduction, the first three decks are released. They represent Ruko and Yusuke, the show's first two protagonists, and Akira, the show's first antagonist. WeCross does a great job in making these characters the decks represent more memorable to sell product without playing its cards too soon. WeCross's facade of being a cute children's show is completely thrown out the window from episode 5 onward. Here, Hitoe is cornered by Iona and forced to battle her. Hitoe loses, and when she's found by Ruko and Yuzuki, she's unable to recognize either of them. It's here that the two learn the truth about selector battles. After three losses, a person's selector status is gone. Not only that, but a person's wish is then corrupted. For example, if a person who wishes to become rich loses three times, they will be plunged into poverty. On top of this, their memories of being selectors are lost. So in Hitoe's case, her wish is to make friends. Therefore, she loses the friends she has and is unable to make new ones. From here on, WeCross's aesthetics take a drastic shift. Dramatic camera angles, epic orchestral music mixed with glitchy dubstep. But, I think there's a valid case for Wii Cross that isn't just, it's an edgy card game anime. There really is a lot more to it. In many ways, card game anime take their tropes and structure from common shonen fighting anime like Dragon Ball and Naruto. Shows like Yu-Gi-Oh! revolve the plot around the products themselves, hence why so many shonen tropes are used. Card games is a way to resolve all conflict, tournament arcs, and the use of hobbies to make friends are all ways these shows present their product as a way to improve one's own life. It's the ability to turn escapist fantasy into fulfilled reality. Though, to be seen as a legitimate commentary on the genre, it needs to properly challenge the tropes of card game anime. I'm going to continue using Yu-Gi-Oh! as my basis for what Wii Cross does differently, since they're essentially polar opposites. Wii Cross's protagonists, as well as the majority of the cast, are young teenage girls. These characters don't really represent the typical demographic of trading card games. This is also coupled with the fact that female-centric shows aren't often associated with darker themes, at least not this early on in the show. There are no friendly rivals. No Joey Wheeler, no Gary Oak, just crazy and more crazy. In the case of Yu-Gi-Oh, Yugi, Joey, and Kaiba all share a relatively similar goal in wanting to be the best. While they all have their own personal problems, each character is connected by a commonality. Weecross's antagonists, Akira and Iona, are presented as having their own intentions. The only reason the protagonists have any interaction with them at all is for the sheer fact that they have to play against each other to have their wishes granted. The idea behind hobbies to make friends or friendly competition is shown to have a negative impact, suggesting they'd be better off not playing the game at all. Whether it's Hitoe, who suffers from legitimate psychological trauma from losing, or Ruko, who struggles with her enjoyment from playing the game despite everyone shaming her for participating without a wish of her own. There is no tournament arc for the purpose of generating hype. Instead, the show is a natural elimination style progression. The actual tournament in the show is compact into about a single episode. Furthermore, unlike most action anime, We Cross is not about saving the world. Its conflict is completely isolated from real world problems. There is no global economy founded on a children's card game. We Cross, Cross is not soccer. It's more like an actual card game in our own reality. Minus the magic. Everything I've mentioned are just simple subversions. 
The purpose of these are more to engage the audience before making substantial points, because no one's going to watch another card game anime unless it's from a big name. In Wii Cross, the game itself is used as a means of conflict resolution between characters. Despite this, there's a significant lack of explanation of the actual rules of the game. Not only are the rules never fully explained in the show, but many games that are important to the plot are just rushed through in favor of showing the outcomes. Explaining the rules in shows like Yu-Gi-Oh! is often done where the rules are scattered across the series in bite-sized form. Though, unlike Yu-Gi-Oh!, We Cross actually follows the rules and characters often enact coherent strategies. We know this is deliberate from an interview with the director and the writer, which I'll go into more detail about later. But this deliberate ignoring of the game itself proves that We Cross is really serious about putting its narrative before its product placement. In regard to the focus on narrative, there's a scrubs versus pros mentality and the lack of luck as a plot device in We Cross. In Yu-Gi-Oh!, the main character is always able to draw what he needs based on the will of his draw. This plot device is referred to as the heart of the cards. He's good. He knows every aspect of this game. But my grandpa put all his gaming knowledge, his whole heart, into assembling this deck. I have to believe that it holds some secret strategy. This card is useless. There's no glorification of game mechanics to create tension and interest in Wii Cross. It's clear that characters win because they are better players with better mentalities. This paints a much more realistic depiction of winners and losers, instead of marketing an all-inclusive message that anyone can win. I certainly resonate with this. As a kid, I believed I could win in Yu-Gi-Oh! if I just tried hard enough. Obviously, this is prior to understanding the more advanced mechanics of the game. Since selectors are pitted against each other, there's a distinct sense of isolation between winners and losers. Every player has their own agendas, and because there are high stakes, the mentality to win is even greater. The reason we recognize that this winner's mentality is toxic is because we eventually understand that this is not a luck-based plot progression. Akira, or Aki Lucky as she likes to refer to herself, is a great example of how this mentality affects the psychology of the characters. Akira is a total tryhard. Her wish is to be better than Iona. And to do this, she not only needs to become skillful at the game, but must also adopt tactics that ensure a higher probability of success. Akira literally hands a girl her final loss, even though she has a terminal disease. This shows her hardcore resolve to win even at the expense of others. It's kind of messed up. Break down, you stupid little bitch! As the show goes on, We Cross presents the game in an increasingly negative light. Characters like Akira challenge the notion that card games make you a better person, instead showing how it can bring out the worst in people. I won't go into detail because there's many twists and turns to the story of Selector Infected We Cross. The twist of wish corruption is only the first in a long line of interesting plot developments. Now, I wouldn't consider myself the best person to comment on art and music direction, but I'll do my best to explain why I believe We Cross uses its visual and audio aesthetics to convey its literary themes and motifs. We Cross has strong themes of isolation and alienation throughout its story. For example, there's Ruka, who's abandoned by her mother and placed into the care of her grandmother. These themes are represented in its art direction. Gloomy perspective shots back alleys, industrial construction sites. The show likes to use public spaces where everyone around the character is going on with their day. We Cross also uses perspective shots of tall buildings next to small characters to represent insignificance. This is a harsh departure from the vibrant and neon settings of shows like Yu-Gi-Oh! All of the human characters in We Cross have natural hair colors. No cute cat girls with pink hair, just normal girls playing with magical cards. It's why Ruko feels this sense of self-importance. She herself is average, but in the world of We Cross, she can be a hero. 
Unfortunately, Ruko learns that she cannot just save the world however she wants, and often she's just used to fulfill the plans of others. As for the music, it's, well, interesting to say the least. I've broken so many innocent girls, I've lost count. I stomped their fondest wishes away, denied them all hope. I crushed their very hearts. A lot of dissonant piano music, noisy techno, ambient drones, and general glitchy sounds that you'd find in any common internet horror. We Cross has no in-between in regard for intensity. Either there's eerie ambience with like deep pulses or distorted dubstep music, all of which is only there to give you anxiety in any given scene. I don't really have much to say about it other than I think it's awesome. The show's music really adds to the atmosphere it's trying to give off. From eerily quiet to deafeningly loud, you always know that things can go from 0 to 100 at any point. I'm not sure there's much else I can say without giving away any more of the plot. We Cross is definitely an underrated gem in the card game pile. It's not necessarily new to the medium, but it was a refreshing take for the genre. I think it tells a compelling story and it only needed 24 episodes to do it. No mindless filler or villain of the week antics. In that interview I mentioned earlier, Sato and Okada talk about the creation of We Cross and their personal feelings towards the project. Sato talks about what made him participate in the project. I wasn't able to make a mental picture as a whole when I was told it would be a simultaneous project with a trading card game in development. However, Warner's producer told me we don't want an anime adaptation of the game, but an original story. Okada was asked what she wanted to tell the audience through the project. The selector in the title is something big for me. A story in which choice appears is something I've liked a lot in the projects I've participated in. This project talks about the importance of choice. However, I want to portray the story after the moment the choice is made. There's clearly a lot of passion behind Selector Infected We Cross. That's more than can be said about all the various toy anime in the 2000s. That's exactly what made We Cross finish so strong. Its passion drives the narrative, and everything is really consistent in quality. I hope that in the 2020s, anime like Yu Gi Oh! or Vanguard can employ some darker themes and aesthetics. Even if they are advertised to children, it doesn't mean they have to be lazily made. As for We Cross, I plan to watch its other two seasons with different cast members, and hopefully it lives up to the quality of the original. That being said, there will always be a love in my heart for We Cross, and I really do consider it up there with the better genre deconstructions of anime as a whole. I would happily call Selector Infected We Cross the best card game anime. Thanks for watching the first episode of In Defense of the Dub. If you like this video, you can subscribe, like, or comment and let me know what you think. This is my first video and I want to keep making more, so let me know how I can improve in any way. Thank you to Critical Otaku on Reddit, whose essay on Wii Cross I used as the foundation for this video. I'm going to link that in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I can't wait for the next time. Bye.